guys, happy new year or almost new year. Today, since it is New Year's Eve, I want to focus on New Year's resolutions. So I want you to be honest, have any of your New Year's resolutions ever stuck? Have you ever completed them? If the answer is no, that's okay. Only 12% of people actually meet their New Year's resolutions. And there's very specific reasons why. So I know that we've talked about this from a metaphysical perspective, but it's a new year. It's a new perspective. I want us to be very empowered and I want us to make this whole process easy. So I made this process very easy for you. I collected all of the science, all of the data. Most of what you're going to see online is just your goals aren't specific enough. And that is one of the number one reasons why people's New Year's resolution, I mean, think about it. That's 88% of people New Year's resolutions never work out for them. But it can't just be that. It can't just be it's not specific enough. There is, I will say this, I actually created a list of reasons using recycled paper for the top reasons why people's New Year's resolutions don't work out. So this is the cheat sheet. So I want you to take a moment, pause this video, Go grab a piece of paper so you can take notes and I will define all of the reasons why people fail at New Year's resolutions and what you can do to change that. Okay, so grab the pen and paper. Okay, I'm assuming that you're back. <laughs> so the number one thing that I put on here is specifics. Now, there's a 45% chance that if you write something down uh, that is specific, as in, you know, m most resolutions are, I'm gonna, I wanna lose some weight this year, right? What, what, what the heck does that mean? That's like, that, that doesn't really qu quantify anything in our minds, right? But if you say, I want to lose 10 pounds this year, great, that's specific. That's something that you could actually do something about. So that's great that you have a, sp a specific goal in mind, but what is the specific timeline? Okay, so I need you to have a specific goal in mind and a specific time. I would suggest, because one of the other issues on this list is sprinting instead of enjoying the process. Um, I want you to just write time period, but we'll come back to that, okay? So your New Year's resolutions, whatever they may be, I would suggest no more than five. I want you to be specific about your goal, what it is, and quantify it. If you wanna make $100,000 this year, additionally, okay, great. That means in a 12 month period, you need to make, what, $5,000 a month, that's something that we could actually work towards. So even if you don't make exactly $100,000 at the end of the year, if you're working towards making $5,000 every single month, every month is gonna get better because of everything that I'm about to show you. So we wanna be specific because sure, at the end of 2021, maybe you didn't hit your goal, but maybe February of you know 2022, you did, right? Because we need to break down our New Year's resolution into 12 months and we need to pr track our progress. So if your goal, I'm just gonna suggest this, is to lose 10 or 15 or 20 or even 50 pounds, maybe you know it should be going slow and making um, life lifestyle changes or even losing that weight but maintaining it. And I, I do wanna talk about this because it's one of the most common things that I hear. You know, I'm, I'm gonna offer some more suggestions on weight loss, okay? What about eating foods that are rich nutritionally, right? I think we could all use that, right? We It's great to be body positive. I love of, you know that we have these movements that encourage positivity for ourselves but we should also be healthy so that's something that we can focus on is eating more nutritionally sound food and so maybe your goal isn't um, to lose weight this year but maybe it's to be healthier and if it is to lose weight there there is a right way to go about it and there's a wrong way so we can talk about this in another video but that is the number one year's resolution that I hear so specifics, okay, we're gonna come back to a time period, but your goal, all five of them, I'm suggesting doing five, so I'm gonna put a little five here, uh, should be specific. So what that could look like is, okay, I'm gonna make a uh, hundred grand this year. Keep in mind, it's COVID, but that means I have to make, is that five grand a month? Five grand a month. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll assume, let's just say it's I'm gonna make five grand a month, okay? So that's that's the monthly goal, and then there's something that we can work towards, okay? 
So that is one of the reasons that 55% of people fail in New Year's resolutions. They're not specific about their goals. They're just like, I want to make more money. I want to lose weight. I want a good life. That It's not specific enough for our brains to get working, okay? The next is not having a plan. So a plan is breaking things down into months and having a plan of attack, okay? That's something we're actually, actually going to come back towards, okay? Um... I would say that the next one is not, look how dyslexic I am, support not social. Okay, that meant not having social support. So <laughs> that's my uh, dyslexic brain for you all. Um, yeah, a lot of people don't have social support. And what we've seen time and time again is people don't need confidence in their ability to change. They don't need that. They need support. So there's a lot of support groups out there. And maybe that goes back and infers to your plan. If you don't have a plan, if you're like, I, you know, um, I want to make these changes in my life, but I have no idea how, maybe this is the one that you should be looking at. Do you have a support system for yourself? Do you have a life coach or do you have, uh, you know, a sponsor or do you have someone that's guiding you and helping you along this process? And maybe that's not what you need. Maybe, you know, you are trying to get a new job or something or trying to, enhance your um your uh business somehow so maybe your social support is podcasts and learning about your industry can you take that information and can you break it down into a 12 month cycle right into 12 months every month what am i going to do to enhance my support system there we literally live in an age where we're more connected than ever okay even though it doesn't feel that way even though it's very technological even if you're trying to you know and enrich or uh, expand your business, you have LinkedIn, you have social media, you have these professional sites that are able to do so, you can really expand yourself. So maybe if your business is lacking in terms of marketing, you really do need to focus primarily on social support. So social support is one of the major reasons why people don't succeed. If you only tell yourself your goal and you kind of, you know, don't create a plan for yourself and you don't have any accountability, how are you really supposed to come through with it? I don't care if you're 100% confident that you could actually do this. I still want you to go talk to your friends about it, to tell people about it, because you are going to make mistakes. You are going to make mistakes along the way. You're not going to meet your goals and you need these people to fall back on who will continue to encourage you even when the going gets tough. Okay. So that's really important. And that's a major reason not having social support that people fail at their New Year's resolutions. The next is sprinting. A lot of people think that it's like, okay, I wanna lose 10, 15 pounds. I'm gonna do it by Valentine's Day. No, God, no, let's not do that. That's an easy way to fail. So this is where I'm going back to the plan and to the specifics. Break things down monthly, okay? So let's say you wanna lose 10 to 15 pounds, um, in 2021 okay so if if i tell you okay lose a pound a month say you're like oh grace that's too long you know i don't want to spend all of 2021 with this extra weight on me okay let's say you lose uh two pounds a week or a month okay so two pounds a month just two pounds okay so that means in six months time you will absolutely have 12 pounds off of your body you might even have more but what is the plan right what is the plan so we need to break it down monthly and make it easy make it doable because two pounds weight loss you know, a month is is pretty easy, right? So then we have to look at the food. We have to break it down even further. When you look at the timeline, when you look at the uh, process rather than the sprint, you can really break things down to be very simple for yourself, okay? And so two pounds a month, then you have a whole other process of trying to figure out, you know, how, how to get there, how you're going to achieve this goal. And it should be easier when you're focusing on just today, right? Today's eating or this week's eating rather than I need to lose 12 pounds as soon as possible. So I'm going to get it off my body as soon as possible, but never learn the tools or change my uh, perspective or my approach to weight loss. So I'm going to gain those 12 pounds back. And then here comes 2022. And I have the same New Year's resolution. We don't want that. We want substantial long-term change. And to get there, we can't sprint. Okay. You can't make a hundred thousand dollars. If this is your goal for the year, 
in, in one day, okay? We, we don't want to expect that. We don't want you to overburden yourself. New Year's resolutions should be lifestyle changes that naturally support your New Year's re resolution. That's it. Like, as an example, I want to be healthier. And so part of my plan is sometimes, like this week, I've been staying up pretty late. And I know I shouldn't because I have to get up early. And um, yeah, I feel very faded. I, I don't feel as sharp, right? And that's a big issue for me. So even though it's a little bit uncomfortable for me, I do want to reduce the amount of TV I watch and that's a part of my plan. And I wanna make sure that every night by 11 p.m. I am in bed. Now, are there gonna be exceptions? Absolutely, there's absolutely going to be exceptions to that. But we are creatures of habit and discipline. And if I focus on every single night going to bed at 11 p.m., getting eight to even nine hours of sleep, per day, that's gonna be great for me. That's gonna be great in a year's time for my overall, you know, mental, mental as in brain health, right? It, it, mental, emotional health, very important. So that's why we wanna really stop sprinting. We're not sprinting anymore, okay? We're focusing on enjoying the process. And that's key too. How can you frame these goals like eating healthy, eating nutritionally, getting the getting eight to nine hours of sleep? How can we do it in a way using our right side of the brain, the creative side, in a way that we keyword enjoy? So how can you enjoy this? So I'm going to have to probably take melatonin to kind of get me started at, at my 11 o'clock bedtime. But can I... Um, you know, take a bath beforehand? Can I get myself ready for bed in a way that's very luxurious? Can I make it my time? Can it be about self-respect? Can it be, you know, me departing from the world and just just having this little time for myself? Can I stop watching TV at 10 o'clock at night and start reading instead? There's a lot of things that I can do and these are gonna make such big changes in our life, but we have to take it a day at a time. So we need a plan that's gonna actually make this enjoyable okay now these again are scientifically proven ways for you to be in the 88 percentile of people that actually are able to complete their new year's resolutions okay so the other one is overthinking or over exerting okay so a lot of times people will you know um, i don't want you to have a baby trying to write this this list i don't want you to push out a baby okay because that's hard work and sometimes that's that's how we get right when we're trying to do something we try to do things you know perfectly if you have five goals first of all you can reach out to me and we can do this together if you want to do an email based service i'm at one to listen.com slash grace and i am more than happy to break this down with you so that you're not overwhelmed and you have everything that you need to do if not why don't you do this tonight or tomorrow or this weekend with some girlfriends and get some feedback again that goes back to social support right or guy friends or whatever family um enjoy put on music get creative again one of the worst things that we do and you know i've done a video about this is we only use one side of our brain we only use the left side when we're trying to you know make these plans and we should use the creative side as well so please don't overthink this just make this as basic and simple as possible and then when you have just the basics down that i'm asking you to do then you can have more fun with it okay but remember this is something that you're going to be doing every single day. I don't want you focusing on the big picture. I want you to make the big picture really easy for yourself. So no overthinking, no overexerting. If it feels like something that's going to be hard work, you're not going to do it. Okay. You're absolutely not going to do it. Even 11 o'clock, I might have to change to 12 o'clock. It, it, it feels a little scary <laughs> to be honest so i mean i haven't done my list yet and that's something that i'll work on it needs to be easy it needs to be good for me it needs to be something that is simple just simple and so the keywords here is kiss keep it simple silly okay or stupid some people say stupid i say silly okay um again not enjoying the process enjoyment is so key so you, again when you're writing this list, uh, I do want you to write it all down. But if you find yourself framing things negatively, like, uh, okay, I need to have, um, let's say, uh, I need to put in 20 hours of work of X, Y, and Z. 
you need to make sure that that work is actually enjoyable and enjoy that process. Um, make sure it's first reasonable that you actually have the time to do that. If not, split it in half and start there. Or two, you also need to make sure that you're enjoying the process. Too many of us, you know, we have a rat race society. So we need to slow it down, enjoy the work that we're doing, and fall back on our plans. If you have everything planned out, you could actually enjoy the process. It takes it takes the extra added stress and worry away. So please enjoy the process. That is one of the main reasons why people fail at this, okay? Also, if you're trying to get fit, I would say in that 12 month process, build up to it, okay? Don't go in, I'm gonna go an hour to the gym, kind of impossible right now, or do an hour of working out, you know, for forever. If it's something where you need to make steady progress for the year, and it's something that you know you can't achieve right away, make sure you create a plan that looks like this, okay? So you're like, I'm gonna work out, 20 minutes for the first three months, then I'm gonna step up, or for the first two months, then I'm gonna step up to 30 minutes, then 40 minutes, and blah, 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 and so on and so forth, okay? So so that's a good way of creating change in your life for something that requires progress, okay? So, um, you know, for me, if I'm scared, if I'm hesitant that I'm not gonna be able to hit that you know, 12 p.m. mark, I could start at 12 a.m. because believe me, there's been plenty of 3 a.m. nights. So I start at 12 a.m. and then this is my downward pro progress. I only need to get to like 11 p.m. So then maybe, you know, after a week or two, I say, okay, let's go down to uh, 1145, okay? 1145, lights off, lights off. Can you guys see that? That's my downward trajectory, starting at 12, 11.45, let's say then 11.30. Sometimes that is the best way for us to create substantial long-term change. That all goes back to your plan. All goes back to your plan, your specifics. Um, and, and a lot of these goals, it's kind of funny, right? It's like, it's very simple stuff. But again, when we're talking about plans, this I also forgot to show you. A planner, have a planner, okay? Planners are so important. I know they were a big deal back in um, grade school, but I bought this planner a while ago because I love planners. So every month you have an opportunity to, after you do your little you know, graph of like, okay, these are my goals every month, at the top of your month, write your goal. Okay, this month I'm gonna do this. The next month I'm gonna do this. The next month I'm gonna do this. And Believe me, approaching things uh, a week or a month at a time is gonna be a hell of a lot easier. See, you can map it all out here. And in six months time, I'm definitely gonna be going to sleep every night at 11 p.m. It's gonna be fantastic, I'm so excited. Okay, so hand in hand with this, track your progress. That is another reason why people give up, right? All of a sudden they made this New Year's resolution and it's July and they haven't done anything about it. So make sure to take your calendar, whatever your calendar looks like, and, and break down your plan into months so that every month you're working on it and you're not gonna find yourself going into July, oh my gosh, I haven't done anything, because every single month you have worked on something that is absolutely attainable, okay? And the last thing that I scientifically saw a lot of research on is knowing your what, but not your why. Why, okay? So why do you, I know you wanna to go to sleep at 11 o'clock, but why, why, okay? So because I have to wake up early and, um, you know, it cuts into my, I actually like nighttime. I like when it's dark. I feel like that's when I can get a lot of work done. So why do you want to get up at that time? Well, I want to sleep for eight hours. Okay, let's make sure that that's a realistic time period then. Also, at like the latest 8 a.m. is when I can sleep because of the cat and because of Brian. They get up and then I just naturally get up. So it's hard for me to sleep past 8 a.m. So I need to include that, right? We have to really go over our reasoning and make sure that we have really good reasons to be doing what it is that we're doing, okay? And the why could actually be your second step after specifics because so many times we might write something down like, okay, I wanna lose um, 20 pounds. 
okay? 20 pounds this year. Okay, why? Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? Why do you want to make $100,000? How is this going to make your life any better? I would absolutely encourage you to look up science because just as an example, um, you know, when they say money can't make you uh, happier, that's actually uh, scientifically disproven. <laughs> um, money can make you happier and it's a problem because uh, people are happier up until about $75,000. And so if you're at 30,000 or 20, 30, $40,000, you actually get happier and happier until $75,000. And then basically um, at that point, it just plateaus in terms of happiness, how happy money can make you. And then at $200,000 and over, people get increasingly more unhappy. What is also so important to note is that people who do have more money um, actually are in more relationships. So in more romantic relationships or partnerships or marriages. So that kind of points to some interesting things, um, you know, some some bigger socio political economic issues that we're not going to go over today. But, you know, if you're pushing yourself to make $100,000, why 100 and not 75? knowing that your happiness is gonna plateau. Do you have a family? Okay, great, if you have a family, are you taking on extra responsibilities that you need to release you know, and ask your family to support you with so that you can complete your goal of uh, $100,000. Again, if you have a family, this is really important that you incorporate the, sorry for my dyslexia, the social support, right? Social support is really important. So I would encourage you to definitely do this list Share this with your household. Take these things to, into account. Also, if you want to talk about these things, join us on the Magical Community and feel free to post about it. You know, if you're stuck, um, some of the reasonings that you have these goals. The more that you talk about it scientifically, the more um, more likely you are to actually achieve these goals. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please message me, leave a comment down below, and I would love to answer them. I love you guys so much, and I want 2021 to be the best year of your life. I, I am so excited for COVID to be over. I think we all are. Hate COVID. We all hate COVID. Um, but more than anything, I want you to be taking care of yourself, both personally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and I know you can absolutely do it. One last thing is if you are stuck for um, ideas of what to, what goals to have, what New Year's resolutions, they, they don't all have to be uh, personal goals uh, or individualistic goals, okay? So maybe part of it is, um, you know, I always think back to the movie, Sh um, no, her name was Cher. Was it Cher? No, Clueless, Clueless. Was her name Cher or Ch Cher? I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, she in the movie, she gives her friend a makeover and then she says, I need a makeover on my soul. <laughs> like she literally says that line. So maybe you want to break up your five things. I'm just going to make a suggestion here. One, two, three, four. Okay. I kind of messed this up. One, two, three, four. Five. Okay, no, I didn't. Um, so you have your little pie chart here. Yes, this is very scientific. So maybe you have a personal health goal. Interpersonal, meaning uh, interpersonal relationships. Career. Um, interpersonal can be different than relationships. So we'll do that. Relationship goals. And the last will be spiritual. Okay, so here we go. And then a part of this, you can focus on your individual goals. So I'm gonna repeat this again, health. So health could be your eating habits, it could be your mental health, it could be overall health, and you have many goals throughout the years, which will be the case for me. It could be uh, your perspective, um, but I would also think your perspective goes under spiritual, okay? A uh, career could be money, it could be if you want a new job, it could be if you're building a secondary career, it could be any of these things. Now, interpersonal is, um, you know, interpersonal can, can be family, but it could also be um, the way that you communicate with people. So interpersonal problems could be, you know, I, I struggle with boundaries, right? 
And so again, that's another really big reason why people don't commit their goals because they take on more and more, but they don't release anything. They're not integrating their old actions, but instead they're adding more to their plate and, and not asking for help. So boundaries is really important along this process, right? That you include in all of this, um, your interpersonal relationships. It could also be, um, you know, releasing people pleasing, and maybe by doing that, you focus on your boundaries and the things that you need to work on. Spiritual could be maybe you want to read more, you want to meditate more, whatever that looks like for you. Personal relationships could also include time that you spend with people. And that's something that you can quantify into a plan. Okay, so I know boundaries and people pleasing. How do you quantify that into a plan by having a plan and sticking to it? Okay, and so again, one health, two, interpersonal, three, spiritual, uh, four, career, five, relationships. So this is just, you know, different things to explore. Um, I think that all of us should have at least five goals for the new year. And again, if you need any help, I'm here to help you. I love you guys so much. Happy new year.